So Nick, how's our sales forecast looking? Our sales are absolutely killing it. We're straight heading for the moon, absolutely destroying any and every targets that are being put in front of us. In fact, I'd bet my entire salary on it. What's happening guys? My name's Nicholas Renault, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at automated time series forecasting with planning analytics. Now we'll also take a look at some of the cooler new features, including applications and plans, as well as the all new visualization engine. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So in this video, we're going to be taking a bird's eye view of some of the new features inside of planning analytics workspace. Now, first and foremost, we're going to be taking a look at automated time series forecasting that's now built in. So this capability allows you to build a forecast with a couple of clicks of a button that's pretty accurate based on your historical data. We'll also take a look at how you can now build workflows using inbuilt plans. And last but not least, we're also going to be taking a look at the all new visualization that's built from Cognos Analytics. So this capability is going to allow you to make really fine grained adjustments to the visualizations that you use within Planning Analytics Workspace. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so we're going to be starting out inside of Planning Analytics Workspace. Now in this case, we've got a whole new look and feel to the previous interface that we would have had. Now in this particular case, the version that we're working with is 2.0.57. And there's a couple of key changes that we want to call out. So namely, when you first enter Planning Analytics Workspace now, you're now greeted with a couple of quick launch buttons. So in this case here, you can see that we've got applications and plans, reports and analysis, data and models, as well as administration. And if we zoom out, you can also see that we've got all of our applications listed below here. Now, in this case, we'll spend a little bit more time in applications and plans in a second. We can also see our recent things that we've opened up. So this might be views or workbooks or web sheets and we can also view our favorites. Now we've also got a slightly new interface to navigate through our folders. So if we actually scroll over to the left hand side here, you can see that we've got our home button. We've also got our shared folders. So in this case, you can see all the shared folders that we've got. We've also got the ability to create new folders, sort and filter, and we've also got access to our personal folders from the left hand side here as well. We can also open up and view our different users. And all the way over here, you can also sign out, take a look at your account and investigate or learn a little bit more about planning analytics through the get help menu bar. So there's quite a fair bit of information there as well. So we can minimize those. Now in this particular case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a new plan from scratch. And as part of that, we'll actually use the time series forecasting capability to go and create a new sales plan. So let's go on ahead and start creating a new plan. So in order to do that, we just need to scroll over to here and select applications and plans. And then from this screen, you can see that we've already got two plans available. So we've got our 2019 forecast and we've also got our 2021 plan. But in this case, we want to create our 2020 budget. So if we scroll out, what we can do in order to set that up is just scroll on over here, hit create and then choose plan. So you'll actually see application and plan displayed as well. In this case, we want to choose plan. Now from here, you've sort of got a template interface that you can start to use to build our plan. Now the first thing that you might want to do is name your plan. So in this case, we'll call it 2020 budget. And as soon as you type in the name of the plan, you'll also be able to upload a logo. So let's upload a logo. And in this case, I've just got a template logo. We can also type in a description. And then from there, we can start adding the different steps to our plan. So in this case, we want to add three key steps. We want to set up a revenue stream. We want to set up an expenses and workforce planning stream. And then last but not least, we want to set up a consolidation and review step. So let's go on ahead and start creating our steps. Now, in order to do that, all we need to do is select add step. So we're going to add three steps. So let's add step one, step two, and step three. Now, as we said, our first step is going to be updating our revenue and assumptions. And you can see there that you can really easily update the description. You just need to click into it and make that update. So our second step is going to be updating our expenditure and workforce plan. 
And then our third step is going to be finalizing our consolidation and reviewing our cash flow. Okay, so those are our three steps pseudo setup. So we've now got to add some assets, assign groups, set up our due dates, and then specify whether or not they require submission. Then what we need to do is open up each one of these steps and open up our plan status. Now, the first thing that we want to do is actually assign some assets to each one of these steps. Now, from here, you can add in views, you can add in workbooks, you can also add in web sheets and a whole bunch of other good stuff. Now, in this case, we're going to add two workbooks to our first step. So let's go on ahead and add those. And these are called sales review. So we'll add that one. And you can see that you can really easily search through all of the different assets that you've got available in Planning Analytics Workspace. So this includes views, it also includes web sheets, so you can access them all through here. So the first one that we're going to add, as we said, is sales review, so let's add that. And then the second one that we want to add is called sales time series forecast, so let's add that one. Okay, so you can see that we've added our first two assets. Now, in this case, we might want to assign some groups. So these are groups that are available inside of Planning Analytics Workspace. So if we actually step out, go to Administration, go to Users and Groups, and select Groups, you can see the current groups that we have associated. Now, in this case, if we open up one particular user, we can actually see what group they might be associated to. So in this case, our user admin doesn't have anyone associated to it. But if we select PM, you can see that they're associated to the finance analyst and finance managers group. So they've got both groups. Now, in this case, we're going to assign each one of these steps. Let's step into our 2020 budget. We're going to assign each one of these steps to a specific group. So in this case, our first group is going to be assigned to finance managers. And we're also going to set a due date. So in this case, if we select our due date, we're going to have a date selector available. So we're going to give it one week in order to perform that particular task. So we'll select the 4th of November. And then we also want to specify whether or not we require submission. So this enables and disables the submit button in our plan. So let's select yes. All right, so that's our first step set up. Now in this case, we want our status to be open. So we want that step to be open and we want our plan to be open as well. Now what we're going to do is a similar thing for our expenditure and our workforce plan. So let's go on ahead and add those additional assets. Okay, so we've just added our expense plan and our workforce planning assets to our second step. Then we'll assign our groups. In this case, we're going to assign finance analysts. And again, open that up and provide the same due date. And force require submission. And then we're going to do the same thing for our consolidation and our cash flow step. But in this case, we're going to assign a view rather than a workbook. So in this case, we're going to assign consolidated result and consolidation summary. So you can see based on the icon that's displayed whether or not you've got a view or whether or not you've got a web sheet. So a workbook's got a slightly different icon as well. So we're going to associate these two assets and hit save. And then we'll, again, we're going to assign a group. So in this case, we'll assign finance managers, hit save. And then we're also going to set it as the same due date and select require submission as yes. So that's our plan set up. Now, once our plan's set, what we can actually do is go and trigger an announcement. So we can select create and type budget is now open. Commence submission. Hit done. And you've now gone and posted out your announcement to everyone within those groups. Now, in this case, say we actually wanted to start performing some of these plan steps. Well, what we can do is we can step out of the template page and then select the plan that we just created. So in this case, it's called 2020 budget. We can also favorite that. And in order to open it up, we just need to hit the three dots. So on the left hand or on the right hand side here, and then just select open contribution. And this will step us into our plan. Now you can see the first part of our plan. Let's zoom out a little bit. The first part of our plan is our sales review. So in this case, we can see our monthly weather, we can see our sales by store, our sales by product. Now, also, if you wanted to update your templates from here, you can actually step into edit mode. And in this case, say we wanted to delete this navigation. We can delete that. And we can extend out our visualizations. Now, one of the key new things inside of Workspace or the new version of Planning Analytics Workspace is that you've got much finer grain control. So in this case here, you can see the grid, 
that we're adjusting our visualization to. And again, we can hit save and we can step out. We can hit save at the top here and we can step out of that. Now in this case, say we're pretty happy with our sales review and we wanna to go to our next step. Well, all we need to do is go into our next step on the left-hand side here. So in this case, our first step is sales review. Our second step is sales time series forecast. So we can select that and zoom back out. And you can see up here that we've got our sales forecast view. Now, in this case, we've just got a bunch of data and we've got it sorted by month. And we've also got a visualization down here as well. Now, what we can do is we can clear out our initial forecast. And this will refresh our visualization as well. And then from here, this is where we can start to generate a new time series forecast. Now, in order to do that, there's only a couple of key steps that you need to do. So in this case, say we wanted to do a forecast for all of the elements that sit beneath this particular region, world. We can select world, and then right at the top here, you can see our forecast button. So we can select that, and then we can start to set up our forecast. Now in this case, our forecast period has already been set. So we've selected October 2020 to December 2021. Now a key thing to note is that you do need to have some historical statistical data in order to feed the forecast. So ideally, you want your forecast to be no more than 33% of your historical data available. So in this case, we've got our forecast periods set. We can also choose where we want to save them to. So in this case, say we wanted to save it to a different version, we can choose that as well. So we can push it to a specific product, a specific member. In this case, we're going to leave it the same for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to preview our forecast. So right down here, you can see that we've got a preview button and we've also got a forecast button. So we're going to select preview. And this is going to give us a preview of what our statistical forecast looks like. So here you can see the dotted lines and the dots. These represent our statistical forecast. Now it's looking pretty good here. So you can see that it's sort of mimicking the previous pattern that we had within our data. And you can see that our prediction accuracy is also marked as high. So that's all looking good. We can interrogate our statistical details more and you've got a whole bunch of statistical metrics and KPIs that you can review to evaluate what your statistical forecast looks like. In this case, we're pretty happy. And what we can go and do is just select forecast. And this will now push our forecast into our view. And you can see that's automatically populated. And if we refresh our visualization, you can see that that's now populated as well. So we're just with a couple of clicks of a button, we're now able to review our forecast and take a look at that within planning analytics. So this is now saved to our view and we're able to work with it. Now in this case, we're pretty much done with our revenue forecast. So we can step back over to this side here and hit submit. We can type in a message. So in this case, we've prepared our sales review. All done. And hit submit. And that's the first part of our plan done. Now, if we wanted to, we can step into our expense planning workbook and get started on that. So again, this might be a historical workbook that you'd already had set up. So again, we can still have driver-based forecasting so we can update our assumptions and everything's going to refresh. So we're pretty happy with that for now. So we're going to step into workforce planning and this is all looking okay so far. If we wanted to, we could change our salary assumptions. We bump up our G1 salary to $50,000. And we can also change some of our superannuation adjustments. So again, we can use spreading in here. So we can type in R bar to repeat downwards. And we'll type 0.14. And this has then gone and changed all of our superannuation assumptions. Now again, we're pretty happy with that step. No significant changes there. So we can hit submit and type in workforce plan done and expense plan done and hit submit. Now our next step that we can step into is our consolidated result. Now in this case, we've just got a base view. Now say we're not too happy with this base view, we wanted to make a few changes. Well, what we can actually do is select edit, we can open this up. And if we wanted to, we can start to use some of the new visualizations that we've got available to us. Now in this case, from our exploration, what we can do is select exploration up here and choose all visualizations. And you can see that you've got a whole heap of new visualizations available. In this case, say we wanted a waterfall chart and our data might not be all that great for it, but you can see that very quickly, 
we've created a waterfall chart just with a few clicks of a button. Now, if we wanted to, we can change these fields around simply by selecting fields and you can begin to add filters, change your Y axis, change your subcategories, so on and so forth. You can also change your number of different properties. So if you wanted to change uh, what synchronization is available, any general properties, including layout, as well as colors and things like that, you've got full flexibility to now start changing all of these different properties using the new visualization engine. Now, in this case, we're pretty happy with that. And you can see that this step is already closed. So if we step back into our plan, we can open this up. And if we now step back into our consolidated result, you can see that our status is now available for submission. In this case, we're pretty happy with our consolidated result. So we can step to our consolidated summary. And the beauty of this is that you can still embed web sheets into your plans as well. So if you've got previous reports that you've created, you can still use those. So we can type in commentary. So budget has been loaded. And this still has the capability to push data into our view as well. So simply by hitting refresh, you can see that our commentary is now being loaded. And assuming we're all pretty happy with that, we can submit our last part of our plan. And that about wraps up this video. So what we did is we created a plan. We used the automated time series forecasting to generate a forecast across multiple elements and across multiple months really, really quickly. And last but not least, we took a look at the new visualization and stepped through our entire plan in order to get to completion. And that about wraps up this video. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of future videos. And let me know what you're going to be using automated time series forecasting for. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.